Have you wondered about living elsewhere in your retirement? Well, we have almost daily. No, it's not a simple decision, especially when two people are involved. Hi, this is Gil and Jean of Retire There, a podcast about retirement destinations. We live in Brooklyn, New York, having grown up and worked in this area of the country. We're hoping to relocate when we're both retired. For us, it's the weather, the chaos, the noise, and the yearning to be near nature and not within three feet of human beings. <laughs> That's right. In February 2020, we embarked on our journey to find that special place. We spent a week in Winter Park, Florida, which is beautiful, but something said it wasn't for us. As we were planning for the next trip, the pandemic arrived. Jean then gave birth. I gave birth? <laughs> to this podcast. With so many baby boomers retiring, many must be relocating. Why not connect with and learn from them? Here's a little background about us. I'm Asian, born in Brazil, and grew up in Flatbush, Brooklyn. I'm an engineer turned attorney turned podcaster. I recently retired from a university career practicing higher education law. I love the academic environment, but it was time to do something else. I no longer have to set an alarm, drive in BQE traffic, or work with people who don't always share the same principles. Oh, did I just say that? <laughs> you bet I did. I traded all that in to binge crime dramas into the wee hours just a little bit to develop the podcast, to volunteer, practice metal smithing, tackle our possessions. No regrets so far, Jane. I'm not Asian. And as Gil mentioned, I'm not retired. I'm just plain tired. Aww. Born and raised in Long Island, New York, a place I always wanted to leave. I'm a law librarian working in a court who loves his job, but we're retired by the time we select our ideal location. We will be speaking to folks from across the street to across the globe who have moved to their dream venues and more. So please stay tuned. And remember, if you know anyone who has moved anywhere for retirement, let us know. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Today, we'll be chatting with Carol and Bill Colburn, who retired rv across 49 states, nine Canadian provinces, and six Mexican states in eight years, and are now settling down in Mesa, Arizona, and Mexico. Located just outside Phoenix, Mesa is Arizona's third largest city and offers an affordable cost of living and amazing outdoor recreation. Mesa is the largest city by population in the U.S. without a large downtown. The city is home to over 500,000 people as of 2020, according to the Census Bureau. About 20% of the population is age 55 or higher. Mesa has been described as America's most conservative city by Ethan Epstein in Politico magazine. Hmm. In 2020, yeah, we'll talk more about that. In 2021, Niche.com ranked Mesa the 19th best city to retire in America. It is filled with museums, artwork, hiking opportunities, and delicious food. You may be in the middle of the desert, but Mesa has two rivers. For baseball fans, Mesa is the home of two Major League Baseball teams, the Chicago Cubs and the Oakland A's, for spring training as part of the Cactus League. And now Gil will tell us about our guests. Carolina Escuera Colborn, who goes by Carol, had a distinguished career in the Philippine business sector before immigrating to the United States, namely Seattle, Washington, in 2004. She holds a bachelor's in mathematics, MBA, and DPA from the University of the Philippines. By the time Carol retired, she had worked her way up to become CEO for pioneering IT companies in the Philippines. Twice a recipient of the Most Powerful Women in IT Award, she represented the private sector in the National Information Technology Council. In Seattle, while babysitting a grandson, she taught as an adjunct business professor at Seattle Central Community College, Central Washington University, and Renton Technical College. She also volunteered at SCORE, the Service Corps of Retired Executives, as a small business counselor and lecturer on marketing. In 2015, Carol chronicled their epic journey in her travel book, Carolina, Cruising to an American Dream. In 2020, she released two more books, Cruising in an RV, The Basics You Need to Know, and Cruising Past 70. It's not only about outer journeys, it's also about inner ones. The first sentence of Cruising Past 70 describes how her retired life began. She states, In 2004, I retired early and migrated to America, weighing just 101 pounds 
after burning out from a jet set life in Manila. Wow. Boy, that's like half of me. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not that. She maintains a travel blog called Cruising Past 70 and writes bi-monthly for TravelAwaits.com, an online travel magazine. Bill and Carol now use Mesa, Arizona as a base for their travels within and outside the United States. From there, they've traveled to 49 countries. Jean? Bill was born and raised in Pittsburgh, not Pennsylvania, but Kansas. Population then, 20,000. And population now, still 20,000. <laughs> he attended Oberlin College on a scholarship. He's a smart guy, but he's got to keep up with Carol. <laughs> Bill worked for Caterpillar the Burroughs Corporation, and finally president of the online business solution business unit of Fiserv Inc. After retiring from the corporate world, he became a franchise owner of Minimem Press, a printing establishment. His interests include golf, golf, and more golf. Well, you know, my first resume in my entire life was made at Minutemen Press. When they, <laughs> when they, you know, they did the setting and yeah. uh, it was yeah. so... Compared to now, it's, it's night and day. Okay, yeah. sorry. Bill and Carol met online. They corresponded for a month before they met, and that was 15 years ago. Wow. See, it worked. Some of our other guests have met online. So cool. It was the third marriage for each, and they both have children from previous marriages. Gail? So, guys, welcome to the podcast. My God, I don't even know where to begin. First of all, I was so intimidated to meet you guys, but Gene and I can do it, right, Gene? We can, we can do, do it. Of course you can. can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, so the two of you have been all over the world and there's no stopping you. No. As long as we have, we can still walk. <laughs> <laughs> right. So before you selected Mesa, you considered Southern California, the villages in Florida, Flagstaff, Arizona, and Yuma, Arizona. And Tucson, Arizona. And Tucson. Tucson. Why not those cities? Well, all those cities are fine, except that, you know, because they're all, you know, uh, sunny and warm, except for Flagstaff, a little bit cold and sometimes. <laughs> but we zeroed in on three states, Florida, Arizona, or Southern California. But then we said we had children all over the place and they were mostly in the West. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, we eliminated Florida. We actually had Florida number one. But wow. we eliminated it because of our children. It would be easier for them to visit us. It would be easier for us to visit them. What did you like about the villages? Oh, the nice uh, community and everything is there for you. Uh, mm -hmm. You just uh, go in your golf cart and you can go to a hospital. <laughs> you can go to a movie. You can go to, and you can build a lot of friends. The and villages was nice there. homes. The villages right. was a really nice place. Nice homes. Oh, okay. Okay. But then, uh, so we said the children eliminates Florida. But then, you know, high taxes eliminated Southern California. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So we were we focused on Arizona as the uh, but then we said where in Arizona. So we visited Flagstaff, Phoenix, Tucson, and Yuma. And all that we eliminated Flagstaff because it's, it was too cold some part of the year. We eliminated Yuma because it was too hot some part of the year. And so we, we focused on Phoenix or Tucson. Guess why Tucson was eliminated? They're all good cities. Tucson was eliminated because Sky Harbor International Airport was a better airport than Tucson. It was just a regional airport. Ah. Sky Harbor is international airport. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I yeah. go for that too. So that's how our logic went. Okay. So, so let's talk about Mesa. Mesa. Um, how did you go about looking for housing? Did you initially rent or what? No, uh, we went RVing and we stayed in this in these four cities for a month each and tried to feel, you know, that's yeah. what I think the advantage is of RVing. You can do that before you make a big decision. So we stayed in Flagstaff, we stayed, you know, and that's why we decided we, sh we should better um, choose between Phoenix and Tucson. And we lived in them. Mm -hmm. And then we, we looked for campgrounds, resorts. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we also found in Phoenix and Tucson, which are major retirement, major retirement communities, sure, sure. resorts that had sections for RVs and sections for houses. Oh, and because people really go <clears throat> RVing first and then they decide, oh, we need to settle now. This is a good place to settle. We've made friends here. And then we bought a house. Exactly the same thing that happened to us. Okay. okay. We chose the largest. 
Right. Well, a viewpoint RV and golf resort in um, Mesa, Arizona, has one thousand nine hundred sites. Wow. The one, <laughs> the one in Tucson, the largest in Tucson, had about one thousand five hundred. So we we lived in those two for okay. quite a while before we decided on viewpoint in Mesa. Okay. So then you bought a house in Viewpoint, the same community, After right? After three years, we bought a house in Viewpoint because they opened a, this new um, section where they built manufactured homes, not park models, not mobile units, ma- manufactured homes, right. double whites and triple whites, which look and function like, you know, um, sizable homes. Yeah. Right. homes. Mm-hmm. And so we, have, we own a 1,400 square foot home, a manufactured home in Viewpoint, which is comfortable for us. Mm-hmm. And we did this because we precisely, we didn't want to be stuck in a, an expensive home and then we can't travel anymore. So we divided our money into time shares and a home, a modest home mm-hmm. of about, you know, 100,000, 150,000. And then we reserved half of the money for time shares. And that's why we have four months of time shares. Wow. Okay. So four that's- months of the year, we're out of viewpoint. I mean, six months because yeah. we visit our, our kids also, right? Yeah. So, but wow. six months to stay in in a viewpoint for spring and fall because that's best weather <clears throat> in the desert in Arizona desert. But summer is too hot and winter is too cold for us. We don't you like say, cold. You say winter is too cold, but I have a friend named George Jurassic, and he claims he's the <laughs> the expert the expert on Phoenix. Even though I don't know, he lived there ten years or something like that, oh, yeah. he even wants to be on our show, even though he doesn't live there anymore. But, <laughs> In any case, and he hasn't he's, retired. This show is and he's, popular, and he's not even retired. Anyway, he claims that winter is his favorite time of the year in the Phoenix area. He says, yeah, for don't... some people, for some people who are used to to cold, it's really Phoenix nice. is okay. But you see, I come from the tropics, right? And so uh, Phoenix at fifties is too cold for me. Mm. Oh. For some people, Phoenix at fifties is just right. Right. For those who come from Canada, for example, the yeah. 50s is just right for them, yeah. but not for me. And even Bill, he actually cannot stand cold more than I can. Wow. Wow. You believe that? Yeah. I also like really warm weather. If it's 90 <laughs> to 100, I'm happy. He can yep. stay in, actually, he can stay in Phoenix for the winter and he can stay in Phoenix oh, for the summer. Wow. I can. Now, I understand so, it can reach 120 degrees. 120, yeah. Oh, my wow. God. We're very dry. But it's very dry. What is this dry thing? Is that is it's that really? Hot. It's still 100, 120, <laughs> though. No. no right. You know, I different. come from the Philippines, which goes 120, but humid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because humid 120 means your sweat is dropping all over you. It's like <laughs> having a shower of sweat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Phoenix at 120, no sweat at all. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there really is it's something not... to the dry heat, you think? Yes. There definitely is. Yeah. Yes. Very different. Is. Where I grew up, it would be... High humidity, but it'd be 110 degrees. Kansas. In Pittsburgh, Kansas, yeah. right. So here, at 110, 20 degrees, it's like a 15% humidity. So it's really not bad at all, I don't think. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. It's so, not bad at all. Yeah. I want to go back a moment to the manufactured homes. We actually did an episode just on manufactured homes. So it's hmm. fascinating that you guys yeah. are following yes. with that. Did you look at various models or how did you choose it? Oh, Viewpoint required uh, just Gavco, just one model. And they had different ah. models there. So we just had to follow. We just felt that every, all cap manufactured homes are the same. And it's really the specific model that you want the layout. They had about 15 layouts. Mm-hmm. Wow. So it, was, it was okay for us. We and found something that we liked. Was it new? It's brand new, yes. Brand oh, wow. New. That's okay. great. So how many we bedrooms? Everything from the time they brought <laughs> in the double wide and then they they stuck it into the ground. Mm-hmm. It's really just like a, a stick built home. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And how many bedrooms did you guys select? Because you have family. Three bedrooms. It's actually the most popular uh, layout that people got in Viewpoint. It's a three bedroom. There's there's a one bedroom, there's two bedrooms, there's three bedrooms. We okay. selected the three bedrooms because we have a big family. What if they visit? Yeah. Actually, we even added another room. How did you do that? You had them do it? No, we did it. We did it. Uh, no, we got their contractor, What the, who they usually use. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. And you said that the highest um, mm. these you, these homes go for is about one hundred and fifty thousand people. Can get one? My, the home that we bought for eighty thousand dollars is now one hundred sixty thousand oh, after wow. three years. Wow! Wow, but that's yeah. still reasonable. 
Wow, so you yeah, pay a very reasonable and you only own the house. You don't own you the don't land. Own the land. Right. right, right. So what what do you pay per month? Is it per month $500. For, the, for the land? Five hundred yeah, five hundred dollars per month. It's not really the land, it's you pay for the amenities. Yeah. You know, right. viewpoint has uh, five swimming pools, uh, wow, three ballrooms, ten tennis courts, two golf courses, uh, ten pickleball courts. You know, fifty <laughs> rooms for fifty rooms yeah. for crafts and all those things. That wow. is really the biggest viewpoint. Is the biggest such facility. You okay. could have fun and ask Carol how much tennis and golf she plays. <laughs> I don't. I'm a nerd. I stay in the house and work with my computer. Well, Gene gave me for my birthday a, a pickle. One of the gifts he gave me was a pickleball paddle set, and we haven't touched it yet. Uh, right now, I think we put it in the garage if and yes. when we get to a warm weather, because right now we're freezing. Well, no, today's we, yeah. warm. Today, we, today hit 50. We, fa- we found out they built some courts uh, in, our, in our, where we live. So once well, you get to warmer, we could play. Bill has an interesting story about pickleball. Where I, live, where I used to live, I had nothing in my backyard yet. It was a new house. And a guy drove by and he decided, you need something in your backyard. Yeah, I agree with that. So he came up with this idea of building a pickleball court in our backyard. Wow. And from that, he built a nationwide business. That was the first pickleball court the first in the country. Really? No. Oh what, my where, God. where was this? What what city? Seattle. Oh, Mercer, Seattle. Island. Mercer Island. Mercer Island in Seattle. Yeah. Island. And okay. you had it in your backyard. Yes. Yes. Oh, how yeah. often did you play? Oh, frequently, because we also added a basketball fans. Uh, we played basketball okay. with the kids. We okay. played pickleball. You know, just the kids could go out on their bikes or scooters and ride around when it was more wet. More and more and older, it's wet in Seattle. More and more <laughs> senior people are going to pickleball now rather yeah. than tennis. They're yeah. shifting from yeah. tennis to yeah. pickleball. Yeah, because it seems easier. I mean, even it's I can easier. do it. But you know, better. actually, it's easier. Actually, more risky for oh, fall you're close. because it's a faster game. Yes, yes. Uh, and yes. the balls, the balls, plastic too. Yeah. Yeah. So the biggest problem is people want to back up to get to the ball, and then they fall backwards. Yeah, they think it's uh, easier. They fall backwards rather yeah. than forward. Oh my it's god! Actually, more dangerous. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And Bill, what year was that, that that they built the court in your backyard? Early seventies, I think. Wow. Oh, yeah. It's become like so. Popular. That's amazing. All right, yeah, we're no, cutting. We're cutting into time. Okay. All okay. right. <laughs> uh, no, no. So let me ask you guys. So, do you cook or do you eat at one of the restaurants or what I, do you normally do? Well, I cook. The time we're in we're in uh, viewpoint in Phoenix in Mesa. I cook. I love to cook because in the Philippines, I I had cooks. Oh, I never okay. learned how to cook there. When I migrated <laughs> to the US, I had to cook, and I love it because I found Aww. it to be an art. Which is oh, very good. Art. Really? So I have a new recipe, everything. So I cook about 12 different cuisines now. <gasps> oh, my God. Wow. Well, you yes. seem to excel at everything. Yes. I'm, I'm afraid to ask next. But, but, okay. about, but about food. <laughs> I read somewhere, Carol, that you love this Chinese dish called Phoenix Claws. What's what are oh, Phoenix yes. Claws? Do you know? Yes, Mike. Have you have, you haven't eaten that in a dim sum restaurant? Chinese? It's the claws that are sauteed. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, you should yeah. know that. Yes, I do yeah. know that. I do. It's, know it's that. chicken it's feet, right? Is it yeah, chicken uh, feet? Yes, Is yes. it chicken, yeah, feet? chicken feet? Well, chicken it sounds feet. fancy, Phoenix Claws, but that but makes it, sense. Yeah, I love that the the taste and the texture. It's yeah. sauce. It's gelatinous. Yeah. 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 He likes yeah. it. Do you eat yeah. it, Bill? I know. Bill's shaking his head. I've tried them. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's so hard to cook. It's so hard to cook. No, but so there's no cook. meat. So, you know, it's all it's all skin. So it's cartilage. I just cartilage. Yeah. It's what? good. Cartilage. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right. Okay. What, so what about also in um, wait, wait, sorry, go, go on. Sorry. So um, <laughs> all right, so so we know you cook. Do you do you also take advantage of the restaurants that are there? And are they affordable? Mm. Let's talk about the price. Yes, yeah, they, they're affordable and you can have everything. You know, uh, Phoenix metropolitan area has a five million in population. It's actually even higher than the Seattle metropolitan area. As a matter of fact, even Jollibee, my favorite uh, <laughs> restaurant in the Philippines, is here. Even oh, though there are only 40,000 wow. Filipinos in the Phoenix area. Oh, I've never heard of it. So everything is here. Okay. Is that a Philippine restaurant, Jollibee? Yes. Yeah, Jollibee is the burger of the Philippines that is competing with McDonald's in a lot of places. 
like in the coasts, like in the Southern California or, or, or New York, because uh, a lot of Filipinos are there. Huh, but they're even in Phoenix. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is okay. it good? Do you like it? Of course, but he hates it. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I Why? Other better. <laughs> he likes other burgers better. It's suited to the Filipino palate. Yeah. Ah, yeah, and, yeah. I find like speak. it. I'm and, sure I'd like it. Being close to Mexico, they must have great Mexican food, do they? Oh, yes. It's diverse, though. It's about 58% white, 29% Hispanic. Mm-hmm. I mean, our area, okay? Right. Uh-huh. And the rest is Blacks and uh, Asian Americans like me. So Yeah, I heard it's 2% Asian. American. Yeah, I think it's 2% yeah. Asian from what yeah, I read. 2.4% yeah, 2.4% Asian, yeah. yeah. No, 3.3% Asian. <laughs> In Mesa? No, not Mesa. I'm talking about Phoenix. The Phoenix area. Oh. You know, we really don't distinguish because these cities are fused yeah, together. together. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they're all fused together. No, because uh, that's pretty high to have an Asian population of 3%. You know, I, yeah. I always check the statistics yeah. wherever we start looking. Yeah, but yeah. the but, major, major uh, sector is uh, Hispanic. That's, that's 20, there's a lot of... 29%, you said? Yeah. Oh, okay. wow. Speaking of Hispanic, you seem to love El Polo. El Polo Loco. <laughs> yeah, what, what is that? We don't have that it's here. Chicken, it's a chicken chain. Chicken chain. Yeah, yeah it has. it's a, a fried chicken, but its sides are good because they have rice, not just potatoes, you know, and not just uh, bread, but rice as a, as a side dish. <laughs> it feels it's like... It fits um, the Hispanic and the Spanish... You know, like the Filipino. Mm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Blood. Love rice. It's us. Yeah. yeah. Actually, very good chicken, too. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's, that's why we, we didn't choose Yuma because there was not a single El Pollo Loco there. <laughs> <laughs> they eliminated Yuma right away. God, there goes Yuma. <laughs> and Yuma, Yuma's near the, the Mexican city that has the dentists and the doctors, right? Oh, Los Algodones. Yes. yes. But now that we have, we're staying here for three months, this is the perfect place for uh, dent, dental work. Work. I just went through three implants. Wow. Right wow. Um, as soon as I arrive, I had the three implants and I'm going to be uh, put, the bridges are going to be put uh, the day before I leave. About it's, uh, 20% of the cost. What do you in mean? The US. The implants are so cheap, $750 per tooth. And it's about $3,000 in the US, $2,000, depending on where you are. Wait, are you yeah. going to the Philippines for that? No. No. Uh, well, as soon as we got this old, you know, I mean, older, we we don't like to go uh, long haul flights anymore. Uh, That's okay. why actually we chose Mexico because Mexico is like the Philippines. Mm-hmm. It, it's we have the same heritage, we have mm-hmm. almost the same language. That's mm-hmm. why I can um, shift into Spanish more easily. Mm-hmm. And um, same food, same traditions, mm-hmm. same festivals. Oh wow! Okay, so That's it's like a, it's like home, but. Just two hours away. <laughs> Real home is eighteen hours away. I know, oh, I know. Yeah. 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 Oh, I may I you see. Want to interrupt? Our dentist also speaks very good English. He was educated in, in the, the states. US, yeah. oh, okay. So he's, he's quite good. We really yeah. like him. Medical yeah. tourism is really alive. Okay. People okay. Talk, my sister just came out of a, a the cruise ship to visit me yesterday to see my dentist. Oh. Wow. And your dentist is in that town. Yeah, yes. in Mazatlan. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You oh, know, we have to make clear for the audience. Yeah. Today, you are in. We are in Mazatlan. You are in Mazatlan, and we I want. We've been here since January one, and we leave on April nine. Okay. So I just want to clarify for our audience: Carol and Bill have timeshares in Mexico in three cities: Mazatlan, and what were the other two? Cozumel, Cozumel. and Cancun. And Cancun. Okay. And so right now you're in Mazatlan. We're recording you. Okay. When you talk about dentists, are we talking about, because I wanted to focus on Mesa, Arizona, or Phoenix. Are we talking about Mexico? Mexico. Mm -hmm. We do do all our dental work. Okay. Okay. That's what I thought. Because okay. it's more expensive yes. in the U.S., we do yes, yes, all yes. those things here. Yes. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to the U.S. for a moment. Okay. All right. What are the taxes like mm-hmm. in that's in you. Phoenix? Okay. That's your area, Bill. You know, the taxes in Phoenix, because of where we live, our property taxes are only like $400 a year. Wow. wow. We pay for the house sitting on the land. We don't pay for the land. Right. That's part of our monthly. Oh, uh, right, so right. Really, and sales taxes are like... Seven or eight percent. I don't recall. Okay. Mm-hmm. Not bad. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a minor income tax in in Arizona, but it's very minor. Realistically, our taxes almost very nothing. very good. You know, I, yeah, really. As opposed to being in Seattle, 
yeah. where it'd be a much higher on everything. Right. Wow. So with tax wise, it's very nice. We like it here. Okay. Okay. And all right. Thank now, you. well, Mesa, I'm sorry. You're right. Mesa. No, no, no. So let's now <laughs> cover the rest of healthcare in Arizona. Oh, all right. Healthcare, the yeah. banner health system, because the major hospital system and that covers the Phoenix metropolitan area is number five in the world. <gasps> okay. Wow. What was the name and of that's it? That's what we, we researched that because healthcare is very banner. A oh, banner. Banner okay. health system. Banner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we researched we research that. And we found a very good, oh, yeah, that's what yeah. you're going to say. Yeah. Our family, our family doctor is great. We've mm-hmm. been with him almost since we got there. We tried several others and went to him. We've been going to him ever since. He refers us when need yeah. be, but he gives us really good care. It's one of the problems we had RVing eight years was health care. Mm-hmm. We made a, uh, a mistake of not going to a central location once a year to have our health care needs met. Okay? Right. We just kept on going round and round the country, <laughs> the, the continent. I mean, yeah. So uh, little by little, some health issues arose. And therefore, what was one of the reasons why we decided to settle is in Mesa. And we found while we were RVing a great family physician mm-hmm. who really took care of us and discovered I had issues and he had issues, which are very minor, but they were caught early under prescription that medication for those, and they have not advanced at all. Okay, okay. He's very good. Very great, good. great. So where you live in Viewpoint, do you need a car to get around, to get groceries, or do you just walk around or what? You don't need a car, but I would advise it. Yeah. There is other people you know, in the park will take you wherever you want to go for a fee, but it's not, it's a very reasonable fee. But you, but you know, uh, Phoenix metropolitan area is sprawling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, you will see it's downtown. It doesn't have skyscrapers. Mm-hmm. It's sprawling. Yeah. It's a desert area. There's a lot of land. So there's a lot of distance you have to go through. So that's why, even though there's a bus system, there's even a shuttle system for elders. And trains. Uh, and trains, light rail transit system. It's really much better for us, if, especially if we want to go to uh, state parks, regional parks, national parks, you know, to have a car. That's why we're always moving around all these, especially during the COVID lockdowns. Yes, of course. The car course. was very important. Oh, yeah. Oh, because yeah. that's part of your home. Right. 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 You yeah. can yeah. keep uh, safe there. Talking about driving, though, how far is the, and, and National Park, how far is the big ditch? The ah, big, that's uh, three hours from us. The big ditch, by the way, is... It's the Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Oh, yeah. okay. Three hours. Oh, that's, that's not bad. bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. That's why we even take visitors. We take to the Grand Canyon for a day trip. And let me wow. ask you, in terms of social, cultural activities, um, we talked about the Big Ditch. What other things are there to do in Mesa? Well, you know, um, there were only 40,000 Filipinos. I co-founded the University of the Philippines Alumni Association. <gasps> In Arizona. Wow. I mean, yeah, I found, and now we are 40 members strong. I have a lot of social and cultural activities with Filipinos. Oh, nice. In East Arizona, yes. Oh, and Bill, do you attend them? Yes. Yes. Really? Yes. <laughs> How would she get there? Right, <laughs> 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 And yes, there are some uh, Filipinos also there yeah. who have Caucasian husbands. So they, mm-hmm. he has friends. He has yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His friends there, they, they yeah, suffer the same friends. fate. <laughs> Jelen, they yeah. suffer the same fate being married oh to God. Filipinas. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad fate. Carol, oh my God. Car- Carol's amazing. I always I, say, how lucky are you, Gene? Yeah, I am. Lucky. <laughs> but, but Carol's amazing. I think she can talk a dog off a Mitra. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. So, so we talked about the airport being very close. Do you yeah. guys actually twenty minutes um, away from us? Oh, 20, twenty minutes. Wow. All right. So, your kids are nearby. Like, what's the furthest uh, trip you have to make if you had to visit? Oh my gosh, no! My kids are one is in Melbourne, Australia. Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> and another is in Calgary, Canada. My kids, my three kids, are in three different countries. Oh, so uh, I have to fly to them. But Bill, the my, farthest is in Anchorage, Anchorage, Alaska. Oh, oh my wow. goodness! My you grandson's guys. in uh, Hawaii. Hawaii. Okay. And my other two kids are in uh, where are they? Kansas That's why the and airport Colorado. is very important. But the yeah. people who oh, wow. drive to us are his daughter from Denver and his son in Idaho, Boise, Idaho, and my daughter in San Francisco. Okay. okay. Those and three. I, 
And you have a daughter in Seattle, right? No, no, she transferred to, they were given, a, oh. and my son-in-law was given the city engineer's job in um, wow. Livermore, California. Oh my God. So, this is amazing. Yeah. You guys are really all over the map. All over, yeah, <laughs> all right. literally. Carol, you travel to work a lot. But in that the was, Philippines, you mean? Yeah, in the Philippines. Yeah. But, but you say that was not the type of travel that touched a traveler's soul. What do you mean by a traveler's soul? Oh, a traveler's soul. You really soak in, you know. Uh, yeah. You nourish your soul with the new things you see. If you, you are refreshed, you're in, reinvigorated. But, you know, work tra- uh, work and travel really do, doesn't do that to you. Yeah. Yeah. Most, I am a workaholic. So I only see the four walls of the hotel room or the conference hall. <laughs> and, I, and I go straight. I even had a time when I had two jobs, one in Hong Kong and one in the Philippines. So oh. I divided my month between those two. Oh, my locales. goodness. So I, I really was a workaholic. And that's why I had to retire early at 54. Oh, I retired man. at 54. Nice. Wow. That's amazing. You know, because so many workaholics just can't seem to let go. Oh, you know? yeah. I mean, I, I retired. Knew. Yeah, I retired two months ago. You had a hard time letting go. Uh, well, COVID helped. I mean, ah, yeah. you know, you were it, I, into it. Yeah, I was commuting back and forth, back and forth every day. And then all of a sudden, boom, I'm in my own office and I'm facing my four walls and four I redecorated walls, yeah. my my walls. And so that was a lot of fun. And then and then it was just a little easier. You know, I didn't have yeah. to leave the house. But from time to time, I'm still kind of shocked. I'm going through my records as we speak because we're trying to declutter, you know, because we want to move eventually. And I'm going through all my old cases and I'm like, oh, do I need this? What if I have to test it? (laughs) What if, what if? I'm like, no, I don't need this. I'll probably burn all of it at the end of this week. Well, and you know, I had to go to the U.S. and guess what? I downsized to a suitcase. So I I had to live. I got to start all over again. And yeah. the main reason is I said I was going to have, I was going to retire early is because all the time I was working, I was, uh, I was, uh, my marriage got annulled and we were separated. Uh, so I wanted to, to find my soulmate. Mm. I wanted to Aww. find him yeah. and to travel with him. And I said, the other half of my life should be like that. It should not be this burned out workaholics you should have seen me then that's why everybody says i look much better now oh wow <laughs> that kind of that yeah. burnout thing i don't know yeah. <laughs> she's working too hard now yeah but you guys look amazing though. yeah you guys are having a blast i can't believe you're both over 70 that's amazing <laughs> yeah. that's incredible 73 and 78 well, I got to wow. tell you, it's retirement and it's doing it right. It, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. doing it right. Yeah. yeah. Doing it the right. soul. I get that. All the things I couldn't do before, mm-hmm. like I'm now starting to paint. Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. I have my first painting, but that was really a <laughs> So I'm going into my second. Oh, you're going to have so to show us pictures. Everything that you want. Writing. I never knew how to write before. My, mm. my writing was... You should have seen the first book and the editor's so work. Oh my gosh, you almost threw <laughs> <it> away. <laughs> but I have improved. Oh, I'm sure. The writing so far we've seen is wonderful. Yeah. So I got to tell you, you're you're a, a good mentor. I'm going to follow you. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So follow, speaking of following you, let's now go to Mazatlan. Okay. We actually did a show on Mazatlan. Uh, yeah, we we had um we had a, also a writer. She uh, was a journalist, and so she's there now, and she's paying what is it four hundred and twenty a month? Yeah. So so, so yeah. what about you guys? How how does the timeshare work? Because let me just say this: years and years ago, we were introduced to timeshares, and I remember I must have been it was on vacation, and we were oh my goodness, I would never sit in yeah. front of one of those. You would never sit. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, I am not. And I'm like, I'll sit through it it's because the, then I get a free dinner yeah. or I get a free drink. But it's worse than the car sales. They, they are really, They're really aggressive. Str- aggressive. Yeah. So they how, are aggressive. Yeah. 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 I don't Some know if timeshares have changed. Some of them. But, yeah. I, I can't say yeah. that for all yeah. of them. Yeah. Well, you see, why don't you guys you. tell us how it works? <laughs> yeah. Well, we have three kinds of timeshares. There are different types of timeshares, mm-hmm. by the way. Mm-hmm. So the one timeshare that we own, we bought because we it take us to Europe oh. for smaller uh-huh. than hotel room cost. Okay, and for so we we covered Europe using uh, that timeshare. The other timeshare is covering the U.S. all the different places where you 
can go for reunions. We use it for reunions for the family. Ah. Ah. Having three bedrooms or four bedroom units are more very expensive. But if you own a timeshare, then it's really a discounted, a discounted hotel room. Right. That's what it is. Okay. A discounted unit because you promise to use this much. If you don't use it, then you will lose out and you will lose points and by yeah. default. Yeah. But we are active travelers, so we thought. Timeshares will be good for us because we're going to get them. And then we, I, I didn't even have, it's just like with RVing. We were members of a campground network because I had a real tra- problem finding the cheapest campground for every state. I had to do that over and over again. But being a member of the campground network, guess what? Over eight years, we, we, uh, our per night camping rate was $10. Oh my but it's goodness. 30 or 40 or 50, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, being a member of the and arranging your travels around those bases, mm-hmm. as long as uh, as long as I could fulfill our travel and arrange all our day trips around them, then it's okay. Mm-hmm. So so we we became a member. The same thing in timeshares. You have bases. Mm-hmm. So I we covered all the European countries that way. We had a base, mm-hmm. and for example, Oberstaufen in Germany. Nobody heard of Oberstown. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's where we were, time shared for a few weeks. From there, we went to St. Gallen, Switzerland. We went to Vienna, Austria. Wow. We went to Liechtenstein, Badus Liechtenstein. Wow, mm-hmm. the little the country. Least yeah. traveled, the least traveled country in the world. <laughs> and because really of nice. the trains in Europe, how huh? it just in one hour, you get to another country. Yeah, yeah, Oberstown yeah. Amazing. Perfect base. That's my yeah. next article, by the way, in Travel Awaits. It's a perfect base, and we visited so many. Every day we had a country to visit. So timeshares, if you use it wisely and often, then it's cheap, mm-hmm. and it gets you everywhere. And yeah. you don't have to be packing and unpacking. You have a base in a country, and uh, you actually have friends there. We found a friend in, uh, in because we missed the bus in, in Oberstaufen. We found yes. a couple, and they took us to their German home. Wow, <laughs> which is a Bodensi, which is on the waterfront of Bodensi Lake, which is a very high, high, um, exclusive scale, uh, yeah, upscale resort town in Germany, which mm-hmm. hosts the uh, German uh, plant or flowering uh, conference in in Germany every year. So we we find all these things. Wow, you do real timeshares will do for you if you use it judiciously. Right. And do you have to have like a certain time period set aside for each timeshare? Yes, you have to have uh, well, we are full time travelers now. She does all the planning. And and I love planning. So (laughs) of course you do. So so that's a second. Okay. The first was the European. We have European bases. The second is we have US resorts for uh, reunions, family reunions. And third is we have this thing like in Mazatlan. It's an all-inclusive resort, which is for lease of 20 years. Not a lifetime commitment yeah. Commitment like the two other uh, timeshares. Like that's why they're very good. This is a lease for 20 years. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and you stay there for one month a year? Is that what you do? No, no here Mexico. we stay three months a year. Oh, three months a year. Wow. Yeah, the whole winter, the whole winter. We don't want to go back when it's still cold. And yeah. is food included in the, in the Mexico? It's food country? and drinks. Food and drinks. Food and drinks. Wow. Wow. And drinks. Wow. So you don't have to cook. No. So that's why uh, six months of the year I cook and the other six months I don't. Oh. That's, how I, how, that's how I can keep my sanity about cooking. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So, so you see, uh, it's, and we compared it with uh, buying a house here. Mm-hmm. We could also have bought, like we bought a, a modest home in uh, Viewpoint, Arizona. Sure. We, we, we could also have bought a modest home here. We computed it. It's better to do this, mm-hmm. and we don't even have to cook. Right. Yes. Right. You just yeah. don't have a, a big space like 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 right now. We have right. a um, one bedroom suite. It's not a big space, but it's good enough. Oh, That's yeah. all you we need. Yeah. All over. You know, I visited so many towns. We visited so many towns in Mexico. And remember, we lived wow. in a motorhome for. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, that was and, what 300, and, uh, 350 square feet, right? and you didn't so. kill each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amazing, yeah, <laughs> he almost oh, killed me. Yeah, so tell us how do you decide on Mazatlan or Cozumel? What do you rotate? Or we rotate, uh, we have been stuck here because of my teeth problems. No, oh, okay, so uh, we have to, but uh, it's going to be solved this year, and so we're going to Cancun next year. 
Okay. But we started actually in Cozumel. We bought this thing because we were in Cozumel in that island paradise. Mm. We were there for uh, three weeks and we found out, oh my gosh, this makes sense. Mm -hmm. I really like Mazatlan because it is a big city. There's it's a lot going on. Also, yeah. Mazatlan yeah. is not a resort town. Yeah. Unlike Puerto Vallarta or Cabo mm -hmm. or Cancun, yeah. which are built around resorts. And if you're going to spend two or three months in a place. This isn't. This is a, a, a real authentic Mexican city with yeah. a... With a, with a great Centro Historico, with mm -hmm. history and everything, all their old uh, things here. And it's on the ocean, though. And it's on the ocean, all the mm -hmm. seafood. Yeah. Okay. Arizona is not. So it's a compliment to our lifestyle. It's yes. in every way a compliment. Yes. So I eat all the seafood here, and when we get back there, we go eat all the steak. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, and that's... Bill, do you golf in Mexico? I used to, but I haven't. I did not bring my clubs this time. Yes, this um, time. You know, I like playing golf with the people at, at home. Ah, you yeah. a group that plays all the time. Let, yeah, group, yeah, let yeah. me tell you also why Mazatlan is our favorite. Mazatlan is the headquarters of El Cid, which is the timeshare we use. And it has four hotels here. It has five large pools, heated, some of them. And then it has 50 clubs also you can join. It has a country club where you can play golf and tennis and pickleball and, uh, and also have a spa. And that's wow. where I go to the gym. So it's like the viewpoint thing. So uh, it's like, it's just, it's different. It's in mm -hmm. Mazatlan. The other right. one is in Arizona. Right. But when you're in Mexico, I assume you don't use a car or do you? Do you we bring our car. We oh, drive you bring to Mexico. Oh, you drive. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. But we How don't long? use it often. Yeah. We don't use it often, but driving we found good because why? There are six nice towns you go through mm -hmm. coming from southern Arizona to here. Two are our favorite. One is the Pueblo Mágico. You know about the Pueblo Mágico program of Mexico, the Ministry of Tourism. Mm -hmm. They've named 120 towns of Mexico as magical towns, either because of beauty or history or culture. And also Mazatlan has a Pueblo Mágico uh, an hour away. It's it's so much nicer to have a car. Yeah, oh, I totally agree. You know, the freedom that comes with it, you can yeah, get and up it, and go. And it's only 15 hours to get here. Only 15? Yeah, so we just have one <laughs> night of overnight, overnight stay. <laughs> okay. It's much okay. cheaper. We save $1,000 from air, from if we did it oh, airfare. Right. Oh, wow. That's we true. We save $1,000. You know, I always count the dollars. And, yeah. I and how, how are the highways getting there? Oh, I just had an article on that. Mexican 15D, half of it is fully concretized now. Oh, All wow. the tolls that we had to pay, oh, it has materialized. The other half, the second half, not yet, but we expect it to be also okay. finished. And you, you two seem to travel really smart. When I we're smart. And she yes, you, <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> and, and, oh, and, so I guess we're going to travel but, smart too. <laughs> with timeshares, I always thought of timeshares as, you know, one week or two weeks. I, I wasn't aware that people spend, you spend three months in the Mexico timeshare, you said, right? Do other people do that? Yes, A guess what? More. Yes, there are people oh, wow. like us. Actually, we have 600,000 points here in Mazen. Guess our friends here have 2 million, 3 million, 4 million. Wow. Some of them stay here six months a year. Wow. I mean, they're really nice accommodations, yeah. which we're, we're, we, we yeah. kind of scrimp on it. Yes. Do you know how much you spend uh, for a, a day with everything included, including your, uh, your habitation or your unit? Guess. I'm going to ask you to guess. On the average? You mean for one day? For one day, yeah. One night. Just, I would say. What do you mean? Like just um, accommodations and food and everything? Food, everything, yeah. How much do you think you're paying for a day? 500? No. Four, four, no, no. $100. Can't. What? Yes. That's, that's, that's all they're so, paying. If you, call, if, you, if you compute it 30 days, it's $3,000. What is wow. that? It's like living in an apartment in a yeah. Seattle. Oh, wow. So That's that includes nothing, yeah. your eating, I mean, all the food, your lodging, your, your, your lodging, food and your drinks and all the entertainment and all wow. the you know, amenities, including the country club. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was because I was just going to ask you what the costs were like to put out a head to get a one wow. month timeshare because we have hundred dollars. Wow. Really? See, it, work, it works for you guys because you use it all the time. Yes. And there are people who buy timeshares who don't use them. Yeah. And, that, and, and that's enough. the waste, but not with you two. a lifestyle around it, then it Yes. Works. Okay. Because I, I was reading about 
I don't know, four years ago, there were all these people trying to get rid of their timeshares. And then there were companies that would buy them and then resell them. And I was like, oh my God, what an industry. They are not the correct market for it because we are fully retired and we are full-time travelers. Mm -hmm. Our philosophy is to travel full-time. Okay. To li- live our last years in our life traveling and, you know, uh, mm-hmm. vibing everything that we can. Yeah, yeah. So you got you guys are not homebodies at all? I mean, I, I know. Six months a year, we're in Mesa. Okay, well, that's a homebody thing, I guess. Yeah, right? but yeah. also it had to be a lot of uh, amenities. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because we are, we are easily bored, I think. That's right. why. And right <laughs> now, it's not like it used to be. You know, everything is still shut yeah. down a lot for people. Yeah. Oh, it is. There's as much going on as there okay. used to be. And I felt safer during COVID with timeshares, by the way. Okay. Why because is that? They consider, because they consider, I asked them that, and they considered you homeowners. What do you this mean? It's your home. It's oh, your home. So for the they, ta- for the... they take care of it like it's your home. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the, the cleaning and everything is all systematized, but maybe it's the same as hotels. But then you see, it's like your friends are, have used those units. Mm-hmm. Like it's your friends. It's not real strangers. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And you get to know them after a while. You get to know them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, the cost of living in Mazatlan of healthcare. It's very cheap. As I said, the dentist, everything. We even have a doctor here in. A, in oh, wow. In a, so it's very, and the medicines, my God, they're yeah. so cheap. Remember, that's one of the problems we haven't solved in the U.S. The yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's so cheap here. Right, right. At, and we know that you don't sometimes even need a prescription. You can just go. All the there. time you don't need a prescription. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> you yeah. need a prescription all the time. Right. And so you pay out of pocket for health care, yes? Yeah. So even if you know, that's why I said, what you don't really need an insurance because it's so cheap. Yeah. But you can also, there's a way of using your Medicare. Mm-hmm. In and, Mexico? In Mexico, yes. You've got to keep all the receipts and then submit them later. Oh, Try to wow. get your money back. I didn't know okay. that. Wow. Okay. There is a, a company that does it here. Okay. And how did you find your physicians in Mexico? Like if you oh, go we to- have one in, here in the hotel. There's one they in the have, hotel. They oh. have a physician assigned to us. Oh, wow. So if there's an issue 24-7, there's someone available? Oh, yeah. That's true. That's true, yeah. That's great. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm good. All right. I just have general questions about retirement. Carol, you said retired stress is positive stress, not like stress you had before you retired. What do you mean? What's positive stress? Positive stress is you're looking forward. It's positive because you're, uh, it's stress because you really have to do a lot of things, do a lot of research, uh, decide a lot of things. But then, you know, it's positive because you're looking forward to something you really like to do. But at work, sometimes you don't really, you can't choose what you're going to do. You don't, you may not be looking forward to a, a boss that is uh, not treating you well, or you may not be looking forward to some colleagues who are too nitpicking you know, about your work or things like that. <laughs> but here, you really create something that you would like. You're looking mm-hmm. forward to something that you create yourself, and therefore it's not going to be something you don't like. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I relish the planning it really becomes that the destination that you're going to go to, mm-hmm. the experience you're going to have is even going to be better if yeah. you plan well, yeah. if you go through all the stresses of planning and researching and all these things. So Carol, how do you organize all your planning? I mean, this is something that fascinates me and I love planning. So what do you have? A big spreadsheet? The computer. The computer. I know, yeah, but, I have, but what yeah. do you do? You have a big spreadsheet and then you yeah, eat all the prices. Big spreadsheet. And... Yes. I have a big spreadsheet. <laughs> and yeah. well, right now you have workspaces, right? Like yeah. in the magazine, we have Trello. Yeah. So uh, I'm I, and, and Google workspaces in the yeah. alumni yeah. organization you're running. So there's a lot of tools to help you organize. Yeah. As, first of all, it's lists. Yes. And then you go lists to, and lists and lists. Spreadsheets. And okay. then you go to workspaces. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. We, we live on uh, Google Docs and Google Spreadsheets. Yeah. Because, yeah. for example, when we um, draft, you know, questions for a show, what have you, I'll oh, yeah. share it. I was, I was yeah. amazed, by the way, that's very good. <laughs> I've, I've been a guest for several podcasts and you are more organized than them. <gasps> oh, oh, there oh, you go, girl. So nice. Good yeah. Job. Yeah. yeah, very organized. And look at that. We have an hour and you covered everything that you said you were going <laughs> no. to cover. I have, I have one question, just Gil, that's what I'm going to ask, but you talk about sexy genarians. What's that? <laughs> 
Well, I just, I think people just dread growing older. Uh-huh. And so when I was 50, I felt, you know, it's okay. When I was 60, I said, oh my gosh, that's really getting into old that thing. So I had to think of a word that I would love to use about myself. Uh-huh. And, this, you know, a sexagenarian, I shifted into sexygenarian. Right? <laughs> so in my 60s, and <laughs> my 60s, I was a sexygenarian. And in my 70s, you know, it's a septuagenarian. Mm-hmm. I, I wrote it to become sensuagenarian. Oh, so you're the same girl. team. <laughs> I was a sexy genarian then. I'm a sensual genarian now. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right. We know that you're doing other things as well. You've done the RV. You've done the timeshare. Jean yeah. was very curious about something you brought up in our pre-show, and that is one of the future ideas is cruise shipping, right? Yes. Uh, or cruising. No, cruising as a retirement lifestyle. Okay. As a retirement lifestyle. Yeah. Now, how are you going to fit that in with all the other things? We actually tried it already with, uh, you know, I told you about the lifetime, um, the enrichment voyages of the University at Sea program, yes. where, where students actually get their degrees while on a ship going around the world because their degree actually requires knowledge of the world, mm-hmm. the global yeah. uh, immersion. And therefore, they have these, uh, these people who are doing this uh, university at sea have opened up certain uh, a certain number of uh, units for adults, not students, but like us, so that they can cruise around the world with them. But their minimum is one month. So we tried the minimum and we did the Baltics with them. Oh. And it was so fascinating because, mm-hmm. you know, every time we were at sea, we were being taught by these PhDs who were the professors of the students wow. in the country we were going to visit as far as culture, economic, politics, those mm-hmm. three. So we would always have the, such uh, sessions. And it was so nice. So we said, maybe we should really mm-hmm. retire that way also for a few years or at least one year. And uh-huh. uh, I am so glad they have opened up again. I mean, uh, after that co- the COVID thing, I thought, oh my right, gosh, right. will they open up again? They have. So, and their minimum is one month, but you can go with them the whole year. So if you go for a year, you will have to establish medical... They have know. a clinic. They have doctors. So we oh. had a clinic. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. like what they have here. Uh, okay. They have a clinic, they have a doctor. And if you have, you need something else, the port where you're going, they're going to connect you somewhere there if you need yeah. some more specialists. Right. But if you're doing this for a year now, what's going to happen to your timeshares? Oh, uh, we've got, we may be passing. Well, for example, this uh, Mexican timeshare, we're going to collapse it. We're going to advance the years so that we're going to do a more months in a year. Ah. Oh, so you don't we'll ask them permission for that. Mm-hmm. So instead of 20 years, we're now on our fourth year. We have six. 16 years. So instead of 16 years more, we're only going to have eight years more. So we will find the time to do it. Uh, The main problem is are we going to be healthy enough to be able to do it? And do I want to spend a year on a ship? Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. He's the one who loves to full time in Mexico, 12 Mm -hmm. months in Mm -hmm. Mexico. I Ah. don't. I like full time in the cruising. He doesn't. So it will have to be a compromise. Yeah. Compromise. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, it's it's interesting that you know, I've looked it up and there have been a lot of articles about cruising full time for retirees, but I haven't oh, found you? I haven't found too many people have actually done it. There've been Oh no, who, not too many. There's yeah. a woman who wrote a book about it. She spent about twelve years on a cruise ship. You know, she's older now and she's not doing it anymore. That I've haven't, haven't found too many people, but there is a company called World Residences at Sea. Oh yeah, there is one. Yeah. And and they, you can purchase a room from them. It's yes. sort of like a timeshare. Yes. Yeah. Which, I'm shocked. Wow, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Now you're my idol. <laughs> the problem is, I think it's very expensive. Yeah. Oh, well, she, is, she manages every penny. Be doing. Oh, but you know, the cruising, the one the university at sees, it's better because you can uh, do it for one year and say you've yeah. done it. Also, you can I take those classes. It. It's not a really big ship. And either. those classes are the really the draw. Yes. Because you really broaden your perspective. You really broaden and you, you compare country to country. It's a relatively small cruise ship. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's not like one of those, you know, Carnival or Hollywood. Oh, nice. It's not one of those. It's smaller. So how many people are on board, basically? Thousands also, but not as many oh, as them. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think it was that many. That's really big. Our room was bunk beds. What? We had bunk beds in our room. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. 
that's God. funny. All Just right. like the students. It's for students, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, this has been great. We're going to wrap it up. And But do you guys have any advice for people who want to retire? You guys seem to have done it in a really smart way. You seem to really enjoying yourself. You do what you like. You know, everybody's different. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. But you seem to economically, you seem, seem to have done oh, it right. Yeah. And spiritually, you seem like you've, you've really found the place in your hearts that you guys love. What kind of advice would you give to people who want Pre- to retire? Prepare for it well financially. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do some um, research. Do yeah. some research. Yeah. Prepare, I think uh, we are <laughs> doing, we're able to do what we're doing now because we were prepared for it financially. More him than me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and so really saving for your retirement so that you're, the, in, during your retirement, you're able to do what you want to do. Not just in places you want to visit, but in the lifestyle you want to enjoy. And uh, all the other things you have to buy during retirement, adventures, experiences, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, save up for it. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't, I was a very frugal person. And so was he. And right now, um, I am still frugal, but right now I'm enjoying things I never thought I would enjoy. Yeah. That's yeah. so I great. Never thought earning pesos in the Philippines, <laughs> then I'm able to do this. Well, it's because I found him. A lot of people. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, <Yeah>. <laughs> In terms of being able to retire this way, a lot of people want to live in their home they've been in all their lives. Yeah. Sure, so sure. live, if they have family all still in the same area, they want to be close to that. Mm-hmm. So because our family is spread all over the place, it made it kind of easy. We can travel and yeah. see people at the same time. And we made a choice to own a modest home, mm-hmm. not something like a trophy home. No. Oh, yeah. Like it's somewhere had... we'll be comfortable and then yeah. we can go around the world. Yeah. So it's a balancing. So it really depends on the lifestyle they want to choose. If they, if they want to retire in a nice big home with swimming pool, and all, that's also okay. Everybody's different. Mm-hmm. Right. But we decided right. this way. Modest home, so we have enough money left for traveling. That's and we're right. definitely different. That's great. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> and I got to tell you guys, you've really inspired us. I mean, I pretty much both the mindset <laughs> of, I, I, I love being at home because I have a lot of activities like stained glass, I make jewelry, and, and those things require being in a space, you know, for X amount of time. But I mean, but we want to start traveling because once we started doing the show, I think it really opened up our oh, eyes yes. to all these places. That's your and major like, education now. Yeah, yeah and, exactly. You know, like you point, it had they have a stained glass, woodworking shop, all yes. those all those yes. things are available in the mm-hmm, club. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You don't even have to invest in the equipment. Right. It's the all the same there. thing here. The same yeah. thing here in Mexico. So we will. We will. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, this has been amazing. Yeah, you guys are great. I am so glad we met you guys. Oh, I'm Thank so you. glad you're the ones hosting us here. <laughs> this is such a wonderful conversation, my God. I know. We never stop talking and we hit all of the points. I know. And you know what? All the stuff also are outlined in your books. And I think all the secrets are there. I'm not going to do any research, Carol. I'm just going to pick up your book and say, all right, if we're going to RV, this is what to do. And this is where we're going to go. And, and, and I'm not paying more than $10. you know so but i think it's all it's all doable and you don't have to be you don't have to like jeopardize your trip by making it cheap you know you're just smart about the money Mm -hmm. but for example by the way because of the savings we had also in rv we saved a lot of money true true yeah i mean that is just really the most economical Mm. retirement life right right because you don't have to be in a hotel right no and it was so wonderful being in in national parks yeah all those nature places and we saved a lot of money we bought a house and we all bought timeshares and we are now in the second phase of our retirement Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh second phase of retirement check them out (laughs) all right guys all right I know it's almost dinner time for you. Yeah, so have a, we have a great stuck dinner. to the plan of getting you out on time. Oh, okay. yeah. You made good use of I know. Because like you, you so we're much. smart. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs> this care. is great. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you know someone who's relocated for retirement and wishes to share their story with us, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Our email address is gg at retirethere.com. Our website is retirethere.com. And you may follow us on Twitter at retirethere underscore. Now, if you've liked our show, please subscribe and rate it in Apple Podcasts. In the meantime, be well. Be well.